We are back and we are going to head to Doomchar Plateau. This is the third house I'm showing off tonight. Uh, I'm breaking the streams and up into little segments because, you know, I'm going to dump them onto YouTube later. When I uh, figure out the intricacies of a capture card and OBS, I will like probably learn how to do this better, but for now, this is what we're going to have to deal with. Right, and we are heading to Dimchar. Well, actually, let's go. Uh, it's in Malabal Tor? Is it? Boulder Tree, no cliche. Malbaltor, yeah. Let's go in through the like ominous glowing Daedric portal, shall we? Right, and we've got Ember with us. So, for anyone who doesn't know, Doomchar Plateau was a quarter four reward in 2021. And cost you, I want to say, let's see, 15 event tickets for the Morpholith pet, and then 5 fragments at 10 apiece, so I think it was 65 event tickets total. It was a not insignificant grind, and we got a free housing plot out of it. <laughs> Which is Doomchar Plateau. Now, the key thing to remember about this place is that the only things that were here when I started were these um, base plates. So the floors were here, but nothing else was. So these like windows, tapestries, the walls, the ceiling, arches, the doorways, nothing was here except the base plates. And look, I love those Deadlands doors. I also love the fact that the lighting in the Deadlands gives the uh, Deadland walls and stuff that sort of uh, gold sheen. It's kind of like a uh, gold sheen obsidian, you know? Okay, so we come and to the central plaza of this little uh, outpost we have in the Deadlands. This is the uh, concept for it. That while we were stopping Mola, uh, sorry, Merun Dagon and his uh, Waking Dawn cult. Waking Dawn? Waking Flame, sorry. Waking Flame from like trying to take over Tamriel that we like managed to move in and uh, establish our own little base which is here. So first off kitchen. We've got a nice little spread on the table and you can see we've got Bastion wandering around because it keeps him out of mischief. He's tending the uh, fires and making sure the fish don't burn or the, uh, that they're no mouldy, that the far grave uh, meats are in good order, you know, keeping the water pots filled, making sure the bread's fresh, all that good stuff. I have turned him into a glorified housekeeper, basically. Which is good because he was, like I said before, he is getting on my tits something chronic with his moralism. Yes, I uh, made a whole bunch of food for this place and then we used the. Uh, are those Deadlands curtains? Or Kaji? I forget. Can't remember why I put them there. I had a reason, I just don't remember it. I improvised the um, Deadlands uh, buttress as our post for the game rack, uh, game to hang on. It's a shame we don't have any pheasants for my houses. But you know, luxury vendor will come right around 
and hopefully I will uh, refresh my stock. So we can go out in the courtyard and there's the giant harvester lady going by. Hi honey! I have a couple of guildmates that would like to try and fight her. I don't know, I think it's overly ambitious myself, but if they want to, they can do what they want. These colossal Deadlands fire pits, which I like in here, but they would be a bugger to work in any other setting. I mean, look at them. They're massive. That's not just a fire pit, that's like a, like a crematorium in weighing. We head up here and we've got Lucilla doing a patrol and a target Ogrim for her to like stay at because sadly house guests just can just like walk and talk. I would love it if they had idle animations where they could, you know, I don't know, pick up a book or like stab something if you put them in front of a target dummy, but uh, that would probably involve a bit more work on the AI than the, the, the Zoss can put in on every house guest. I'm not saying they can't do it, I'm just saying it's probably not cost effective. But yeah, this is our little uh, lightning ring arena. And can I... Yeah, despite these uh, tower peak things being absolutely massive, you still can't drop an AOE on them. I would really love that to be fixed. Okay, so if we head back in, we're going to go and see the crafting area. And this time we have the crows because, you know, this is a Daedric uh, landscape and Daedra would be home at home here. And Pirari is very at home here, guarding the dragon's treasure trove. <sighs> yes, the precious likes the treasure trove. I try to lay out as much stuff as I can in my crafting areas, so we've got the, the outfit station and right beside that is the clothing and all the clothing stuff. And then we transition into alchemy. Again, with our like crates and potions and herbs and my my my. So many things that can poison and maim and burn. And, you know, possibly cure, but, you know, we're not going to worry about that. Then we've got the uh, geodes, all three colours. I wonder if they're going to do ruby next time they'll swing around, because that would be cool. And our soul gems, big, small, black, floaty deadlands gems, floaty far grave gems. And a human skull, because, you know, mages and Tamriel. Even in the Deadlands, with their human skulls. A jewelry crafting station right by the fire with a shattered ANSI sword. Because, you know, it's the only sword furnishing we have in the game. And that makes me sad. I mean, see, even Sai Sahan would struggle to lift that thing. Fixed. Broken. Fixed. Broken. Fixed. Broken. Wee. A head cannon that narboffs refor uh, reforging it. Or breaking it. Never know. It's not uh, unheard of for an orc to be evil. A, wooding station, a woodworking station there. And the tools here. And over here, there's like the storage and the armory station. It's kind of typical of my crafting layout. The ceilings for these octagons were like so much of a headache that I'd like just caved in and bought extra base plates and used them as ceilings. 
because uh, trying to use those square deadland ceilings up there to do octagonal ceilings was not great and as you can see the ceilings here are a bit of a jumbly mess I tried my best, but I just did not have the precision to make it, you know, not a god-awful mess. So we've got a couple of little uh, curiosities here before we head out into the garden. And because we're in the Deadlands and it was inhabited by Daedra, it's a very weird garden. Daedra don't exactly innovate, they don't really create, they copy, but they have a distinct lack of uh, understanding about certain mortal things, so when they tried to do a formal garden, they uh, came up with this. Instead of fountains that shoot water, we've got a lightning fountain. Instead of uh, reflecting pools, we've got pools of sulphur. Instead of, like, topiary and, like, trees, we have charred beasties, and the, well, charred trees, really. <clears throat> Hostile Daedric weeds and the like. Innovation is not really their thing. And down here we have a little shrine from the previous occupants. Here's the busts of all their fallen foes. And an altar to Meryn's Dagon, although why Zoss decided on this spiky monstrosity as an altar, I will never know. I don't like it. I mean, couldn't he like, had uh, his head or something? Like a small version of him sat on his throne like the uh, Skyrim shrine of uh, Meryn Dagon. Of course, there's the statue with him coming through the portal. I tried to phase it so that it looks like he's bursting through the arch, but I'm not 100% happy with it. I mean, if we had boulders that were the right texture, maybe I would have tried phasing some of those in, but as things stand, this is as uh, good as I can get right now. And it looks like only one of his eyes is lit up. I really hope that's just a visual glitch on my end. But yes, this is the shrine. So we're going to back on up. And head back into our little uh, outpost. I do love this place, it's like, so infernal. I don't know, is Hieronymus Bosch the right artist to use when you talk about the Deadlands? I don't know, I can't... Uh, I think he is, but I'm not sure for certain. Right, so in here we've got our little research lab with our antiquities. I need another one of these uh, nests of shadow. I only have two of them in my codex, and, you know, another broken blade, tall papa's lamp, a dwarven puzzle box, plenty of bookshelves, another uh, floaty pink crystal. Did I mention how much I love them? I didn't want to go too mad with the bookcases, so I uh, used an assortment and made sure to use the large uh, Deadlands ones. And over here we've got our uh, planning, our assault, our notes, our books, the eagle and the cat. What are you saying? I was specifically told there would be trolls. Um, not the biological kind. Mm. Sorry, dude. You were misled. There ain't no trolls here. 
Anyway, we've got the uh, music box here, which I love because of the whole little portal thing. Just because it's like evil, spiky and sinister. Like, look at that. Boom. And a little uh, Nervar statue for Mary to keep her uh, spirits up. Those Telvani domes are a bugger to fit anything in, by the way. I'm just saying. So, now if we head on out this way, this takes us to the observation perch. And it's alright, it can float because, you know, it's the Deadlands. Daedric realms don't always obey the same laws of uh, physics. I mean, look at Cold Harbor, that's the stuff that floats. We've got our like, little uh, relic apprentice here. And she's taking detailed notes on the citadel she can spy in the distance. It's technically the uh, Truth and Sequence lore books for Clockwork City, but shh. It's set dressing. It's all set dressing. And there's the giant telescope here, and the not so giant telescopes here. And here. We're trying to mount a plan of attack. Giant Ruinak and the Harvester Lady. Now, one of the problems I have with this place is that from here you can see where my chandelier chains are. Which I am not keen on, but architectural building has never been my strongest point. Frankly, I consider it uh, lucky that this uh, thing turned out as well as it did. It wouldn't be so bad if things uh, clipped, like in Conan Exiles or Fallout 4, but uh, in the absence of uh, clipping functionality, I have to do things by eye, so this is how they turned out. And in here we have the bedroom. So we have Lucilla, Mary, Bastion, the Sidic Relic Keeper, Relic Keeper, and Pirari here. But I was naughty. I only put in three beds. Oops. So uh, there's going to be some giant cuddle puddles going on. And over here we have Aerox and Serene playing wolf and warrior against each other. I have no idea who's going to win, the Titan imprisoned in the Dreadrat, or the like super drunk Khajiit mage cat. We shall just have to see. And of course, Skuma Bubbler, because you know, you got to take the edge off man. I uh, put normal, mundane things in here, like the books and the little statues, and then I added a few shiny relics, but nothing Daedric. Like, okay, the Ruby Skull's like a dragon cull, but it's not Daedric, because, you know, we're in the Deadlands, Daedric stuff's all over the place, so I wanted to vary things. Mary's an inveterate hoarder and keeper of relics, but you know, this is the Deadlands, so they're not going to value Daedric relics, they're going to value Tamrielic relics. So, uh, yeah. That's how the uh, Deadlands Plateau outpost turned out. Just a nice little uh, building plot piece to show off. I've seen some uh, other people do some really nice stuff with it in terms of making it a guild house. And someone uh, did a build that made it look as if uh, Meridia had invaded. Trees everywhere and lights and crystals. And that would have been a really good idea, but uh, 
I got like seduced by the idea of building the Deadlands. Well, building in the Deadlands style. And I think it turned out fairly well. So, yes, this has been Doomchar Plateau. And with that, I think I'm going to end this stream, and that'll be the last one for the day. And I'll get these uh, pushed up on YouTube and tell Steve to go uh, watch them. Hey, Ember, miss me? So, thank you to anyone that was lurking and watching, and I shall see you some other time. I've been Dave the Demented, and this has been the housing stream. Good night, and whatever gods you follow, bless you.